Magandang umaga, Pilipinas. Good evening to all our viewers in the United States. Again, this is Gani Celso here in Singapore, and I want to say thank you for joining us today in this webinar for a cause. Last year, we launched uh, three projects, and I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all our avid supporters from the Philippines, Singapore, and uh, United States. We also have some OFW around the world who helped our uh, projects and causes. And let's watch this Lapis ng Pangara. Looks like Bakit po lapis ng pangarap? A boy used to stay after school in Anda, Pangasinan, searching for any pencils left over na naiwan sa silong ng mga upuan. And now, yung batang iyon has been teaching for 20 years now, sharing pencils and school supplies through lapis ng pangarap. And also, he's going to different remote areas in the Philippines, sharing his life experiences conquering poverty, and insurmountable obstacles to give hope and inspiration to the kids, especially the young ones. Another project that he launched is Inspiring Minds, Transforming Lives.
There are still thousands of kids needing our support all over the world, especially the Philippines. And the other project that we launched last year is we are in this together to support schools, public schools and private schools that are needing our support. And uh, this We Are In This Together campaign was initiated and we were able to unite the community uh, with 18 barangays in the Philippines. And we were able to raise almost half a million pesos with the help of our friends here in Singapore, United States, and even OFWs around the world. So I want to say thank you to all our avid supporters for this uh, project. The success of our previous projects are made possible because of our supporters all over the world. So again, I wanna say thank you for your support. Um, this July 15th, we will launch another project um, to benefit public schools in the Philippines, special remote areas. And we call this Brigada Escuela Adapt a School Project. So if you're willing to help and support Filipino teachers, students and schools, please contact me at salsaacademy at gmail.com or you send uh, a message through um, the messenger at Ghani Celso as well. And now Celso Academy need your support for two things. One, I'll give you a minute. Hopefully you guys could like and follow our FB page, Celso Academy. Um, that way you get some notifications when certificates are available. So could you please do that now? Um, and the second is also we encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Celso Academy so you get the latest videos as well. Don't forget to click the, the bell button. We're going to pause for about one minute. At this time, I want to say thank you for watching uh, Maricel, Jeanette from Bicol, Divine. Um, Asnia, Rosalie, Jackie from Basilan, Divine, good morning for, good morning po, um, XYTV from Cebu, thank you for watching, Zaida from Caloocan, and we have, we have 122 concurrent viewers right now, um, I know internet is always an issue in the Philippines, but thank you for spending this time with us. So again, don't forget to like and follow Celso Academy FB page and subscribe to YouTube channel Celso Academy and don't forget to click the bell button. All right, for today's webinar for a cause, our agenda will mainly focus on answering the questions from our audience, particularly relating to teaching and learning. But at the same time, the emphasis is on addressing the needs of all the students. And we will also answer some of your questions regarding life of teachers as OFW, um, especially in the US and um, Singapore. So to help us achieve this target for today, we've invited three experts from the US in the field of special education, uh, they also have expertise in providing the needs of gifted students, um, English speakers or ESL, 
And again, it's evening right now in California and Washington. So right now I wanna say thank you to our three guests for joining us today. Our first guest is from California. She's a friend of mine. And we were, we, we know each other for 15 years now. Uh, we worked together in Florida for a couple of years and then in California as well. She is Carol Bautista. I know it's a virtual, uh, we, we are on live right now, but if you could give me your virtual welcome, uh, please do that. Let's welcome um, Carol Bautista. Hello. Hi everyone. Uh, good morning po sa lahat. It's, it's an Thank honor you. to be invited by Mr. Celso and we can say no to that. And it's hopefully I get to impart the, the learning target for today. Thank you, Carol. Our next guest is also a friend of mine. Um, we worked together for 16 years as well. We arrived to uh, West Palm Beach, Florida in 2004. And then in 2007, we actually traveled from Florida all the way to California for about three days of travel uh, by land. Um, she is a science teacher. Let's welcome Miss Cynthia Dino. Good evening, Cynthia. Hello. Yes, good evening. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, medyo mahina ang aming internet connection. But anyway, I want to say uh, good evening to everyone. Good morning to everyone. Uh, I hope I can share something that uh, you can use uh, later as, we, as you move or transition to distant learning. And I want to, uh, is it okay, Sir Gani, shout out? Sure. I show my sister-in-law. Uh, Catherine Basa and uh, teachers from my hometown, Orani Bataan. Thank you po and shout out po sa inyong lahat. Thank you, Sir Gani. All right. Thank you, Cynthia. Our next guest is from Washington State. Um, we actually graduated uh, the same year in 2000 at Philippine Normal University. And we also work at the same school in the Philippines at St. Jude Catholic School. I taught her for four years. She did for three years, I believe. And um, for what? For 15 years now, she's been teaching in the U.S. as a SPED teacher. Uh, at the same time now, she is a compliance facilitator, a national board certified teacher. Um, about 3% of teachers in the U.S. are NBCT. So we are privileged to have our guest tonight. Let's welcome Ms. Marisol Maliare. Hello everyone. Thank you po. Um, thank you, Gani. It's an honor to be here. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat na nakatune in ngayon. And um, I'm really excited to share at the same time um, to impart kung ano po yung natutunan namin, na natutunan ko nung nandito po ako sa US. Thanks, Gani. Again, thank you, Carol, Cynthia, and Marisol. Let's try our best to make this a casual conversation. So please, please don't stress out yourself, okay? And uh, before we begin, <laughs> before we begin answering questions, um, let's let's say uh, hi again to our viewers, Janeline. Uh, she's from PNU. Hi, Dao Marisol. Uh, Divine mm -hmm. Ivy, Marianne from Binget. Um, Myrene, hello, Mom Cynthia. So we're gonna we're gonna um, post those comments later, and also if you have questions, also you can type them in the comment section, and we will try to answer them as well. All right. So before we head to the questions, let's have first a quick introduction. Um, if you could please briefly tell us your journey as a, as an international teacher. Where did you study? What is your position now? Where are you teaching right now? So let's do a popcorn strategy. Anyone could start. Um, who wants to start? Go ahead, Carol. I, I, I could start. Okay. Um, this is my uh, 22nd year of teaching as a special education teacher. Um, I took my education units sa PNU. 
um, with a master's in special education as well. And then right after that, uh, my first job as a special ed teacher was a uh, teacher mom, and it's in Paranaque. And then we opened State Food School in Cavite, and that's where I met yung principal ko, which is the best principal, Miss Sotomayor, Miss Pearl, who have really truly inspired me to become the best teacher I could be. And 2003, uh, I moved to Florida. And then after three years, because we only have the teacher exchange, we have to look for school district na mag-sponsor ng working visa. And that's when I found Los Angeles Unified School District. So half of my teaching career in special ed is mostly, is, is, is really focusing on alternate curriculum, which is catering to moderate to severe who are students with autism, intellectual disabilities, leading to special diploma. So ang forte ko, and hopefully I could share, is more of functional academics, functional math, functional reading, life skills, and behavior and communication development. So that's all. So yeah, special ed, woo, and I love what I'm doing. Yeah, kudos to all our special ed teachers. I don't know how you guys do it, I, I but you guys, you guys are superheroes. Um, also, I've worked with uh, Carol when we started the uh, School of Social Justice. We founded as a co-founder of SSJ. Um, Carol is our founding um, SPED teacher. And all our um, SPED teachers look up to her. She trained them. She worked with them. And uh, we have high regards to, to Carol when it comes to providing the needs of our um, special ed um, students. Cynthia, you want to go next? You want to? Oh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, good evening, po, or good morning, po, again. Uh, Cynthia Dino, po, and I graduated from National Teachers way back in 1989. Secret, ang aking that. So that was way back 89 with the degree of Bachelor of Science in Secondary Education and um, Biology and Minor in Science. Uh, bago po pumunta dito sa US, okay, so uh, how many years? So I don't remember anymore, but uh, ang highlights are yung teaching experience ko sa Philippines na hindi ko makalimutan. Uh, and I am proud to be a teacher in that sense because uh, I think I was once a facilitator at this version of Source of One uh, as a private school representative. Uh, we conducted uh, workshops or trainings for teachers during those days or years when producing BEC, the basic education curriculum. And uh, is when I conducted a three-day uh, workshop as well among the teachers uh, coming from uh, the city division of Sorsacon, both public and private school, and it's focused on, uh, it was focused on captivating students' attention and retention. More on uh, strategies. I can say, you know, I am uh, comfortable enough to say that uh, when it comes to teaching strategies. Thank you. And I and uh, part in uh, yeah, ng teacher exchange program. There you go. Thank you, Cynthia. Uh, Cynthia is definitely my go-to person when it comes to differentiating instruction and uh, best instructional practices that I use with my special learning kids at the same time gifted students. So um, thank you, Cynthia. And uh, you're next, Marisol. Yeah. 
Um, good morning po sa inyong lahat. Um, I know um, nag-shout out po kanina si Cynthia. Shout out din ako pwede sa si Sir yes. po, sa classmates ko, mga PNU <laughs> ones. Um, I graduated batch 2000 PNU with a bachelor degree in elementary education. I taught for three years since from 2001 to 2004 at St. Jude Catholic School. Um, maibuko ko lang po. I'm very thankful for Sir uh, Gani. Siya yung nagsabi sa akin na mag-apply sa St. Jude Catholic School near Malacanang. I'm very, very thankful for that opportunity. Three years ako doon as a science and Filipino teacher for first grade and second grade um, Filipino-Chinese um, yung mga student namin. And then um, 2005, I was fortunate enough na ma-interview at ma-hired ng Baltimore City Public School System. Um, I belong to the first batch of Filipino teachers who went to Baltimore um, because they are in need of thousands of teachers during that time. Um, but as a, I was not I was not part of the teacher exchange visa because I got denied twice because of that. Um, but I'm thankful for Baltimore City because they waited for a few of us and they actually processed our papers to be a working visa. So I went to um, Maryland, Baltimore, Maryland, where usually all of my relatives are there. Um, I stayed there for seven years. During that time, primarily I was um, in a middle school, six, seven, and eight, resource um, teacher, extended resource teacher, like a self-contained class. Um, mix lahat ng mga uh, students with disabilities, um, specific learning disability, um, other health impairment like ADHD, students with ASD, then also students with intellectual disability, including the behavior. And um, seven years po ako doon, same school. Then um, I moved to Everett, Washington in 2012, worked there for four years, um, two years uh, middle school, being a self-contained teacher, primarily ang group ng mga estudyante ko, yung mga uh, may adaptive and at the same time cognitive disability. And at Everett School District, that's where I experienced teaching students who had cerebral palsy, um, those that need more assistive technology that because they cannot talk. And then I decided before I, I did my national board um, to go to elementary, I was able to experience elementary from kindergarten to fifth grade as a resource teacher, pulling the kids outside of their gen ed classroom um, for two years. Currently, po, from 2016 up to now, um, there was an opening for compliance facilitator. My primary job sa Bong district namin is to look and support teachers when it comes to IEP compliance. And I also go oversee yung mga um, documentations for mga high need students na sinasubmit namin sa state para makakuha po kami ng funding. Um, and then at the same time, involved po ako sa uh, training, WA training, para rin po sa mga SPED cadre, special ed teachers. Um, so yun po yung may share ko, mostly IEP compliance and at the same time, yung experiences ko po when I was a resource and extended resource teacher, both Baltimore and Everett. Thank you, Sir Danny. Thank you, Marisol. Ako naman po ay 20 years na rin nagtuturo. I've taught four years in the Philippines, same as Marisol at St. Jude Catholic School. And then I taught uh, 12 years in the U.S. And uh, I moved to Singapore uh, International School uh, in 2016. So this is my, I'm starting my fifth year here in Singapore. I'll say the highlight of my uh, teaching is being able to be part of the design team uh, that founded School of Social Justice in California. We started a new school with 125 kids in 2010, and we got our autonomy uh, in 2012. And now our popula the population of that school is about 700 kids. Uh, it was disheartening for me to leave um, California during that time, uh, but because of some other reasons, I think this is a perfect uh, place for me now. It's really close to home. So I'm really happy that I moved here in uh, in Singapore. All right, um, Carol, you didn't do your shout out. You want to do that right now before we move on to the, the first question. Shout out to all teachers in the Philippines. Woo I yeah. saw some of I saw some of your relatives commenting, um, oh, Carol. I don't, I, I don't I see you here. 
Yeah, I, I can't remember the name, but just or probably or probably I'm I'm my connection is not that good. Hindi ko nakita. Okay, so, so just say so to the followers of uh, <laughs> to the followers of Carol. Uh, <laughs> hi. Um, also, I just wanna I'll take this time also to to say hi to CJ, Celine, and Jason. They are my family in Downey, California. So hi guys. Um, uh, Bianca, Bettina, Joshua, Jerome, Justin, and of course, Tito Jaime, we miss you so much. Um, sa, sa baby naman ni Marisol, si Nate, and uh, her hubby Leo, uh, good evening. Thank you for, for watching. All right, so we're gonna head now to the question and answer portion. Para Miss Universe lang ano? <laughs> okay, we are going to we're going to uh, include our audience in this question. So I will be sharing the question so you guys could respond to the questions as well in the comment section. Uh, so here's our first question, you guys. I'll show it on the screen right now. All right, so right now there are studies detailing the negative impact of COVID-19 education, not just in the Philippines, but also across the world. In fact, in the US, school closed for about three to four months. Um, summer classes are also online right now. In the Philippines, I think they shut down the school uh, the last three weeks of the school year. So research show that learning loss and achievement gap numbers are sobering, but they are not inevitable, right? So what do you think teachers can do to support these vulnerable students? Again, what teachers can do to intervene to support vulnerable students. So try to think for a minute. I call this the think share pair usually when I have the regular classroom setting. So for our uh, viewers, during school closure in the Philippines, what did you do to support your students' learning? And uh, please respond in the comment section. So in a minute, I'm, we're going to hear from Carol, Cynthia, and Marisol, and then I'm going to share my insights as well. While you're typing your comments, I'm going to give shout outs to our viewers. Hi, Anna Clarice, Joseph from Tapat Division, Roda from Bislig City, Anna Lu from Surigao del Sur, Maricel, um, Dinia Castro, thank you for watching, Raquel from Bataan, John from Bicol Region, Celine Bautista, thank you for watching, Celine. She's a great uh, singer. <laughs> Celine Bautista. Uh, Grace, uh, thank you uh, for watching. Angelique, Angelique Apostol from PNU, thank you for watching. Jan Ray from Jan Ray, thank you for watching. Catherine, we also have uh, a viewer from Indonesia. Uh, Janessa from Compostela, Davao del Oro. All right. So I hope our viewers can respond to this question. Um, but let's start answering these questions, you guys. Again, the question is, what can teachers do to intervene to support vulnerable students? Who wants to go first, ladies? I can share. Okay, go. For yes, Marisol. It. Okay. Um, just to give a background for oh, when... Yeah. When the COVID-19 started, that was the time where meron pa kami schooling dito sa America. So during that time, the first two weeks that we had a closure on March 16, what we did was uh, to provide engagement working packets for all the um, the, the, the parents and then the students. Kasi bawat isa, meron po kami learning management system na pwede nila makita yung website ng mga teachers. Doon, ipinose namin lahat ng mga kailangan. So, special ed po kasi, at ang trabaho ko po, facilitator, um, ang ginawa po namin, nag-prepare po kami ng mga link, materials, ELA, math, sci um, anything concerning sa critical skills ng mga bata for two weeks, yun yung sinimula namin i-provide packet na binigay sa mga bata before they leave the school. Dala-dala nila yung mga resources nila. And at the same time, after that, 
the state itself, Washington State, provided guidance. Um, mag, yung tinatawag namin continuous learning plan, um, where we targeted two things, engagement skills, and then at the same time, yung pong, uh, critical skills. We cannot replicate the IEP because it will not be um, equitable for everybody. Pero na, naging focus po namin yung um, what are the different um, modules and at the same time activities na may provide namin para matulungan yung mga bata. Nagkuha lang kami ng critical skills kada we, uh, bawat isang SDI nila. Ngayon po, um, nagpalabas ang OSPI. Yung, pag sinabi ko pong OSPI, yung po yung Office of um, Superintendent Public Instruction namin dito sa Washington, kung ano yung magiging guidance. How do, to answer the questions that you have right there, part po kasi ako nung uh, team na nag, mag, mag meetings by July, kung saan titignan po namin yung survey na pinadala ngayong week na to sa lahat po ng families within our district. Kung ano po yung form ng, ng um, ano yung mga concerns nila, Number one po namin na nakita is um, yung social-emotional aspect. Number one po yun at itatarget muna namin kasi you cannot start any education or any learning kapag hindi na-address yung mga trauma and at the same time so social-emotional aspect ng mga bata. Isa po yan sa number one priority namin. Um, at the same time, alam po namin, um, ginawa namin, may tracking, may binigay kami sa lahat ng mga teachers Ako po ang in-charge po ako sa lahat ng mga extended resource case managers from first grade, uh, from, uh, first grade all the way to high school. May grupo po ako ng team ko, both um, elementary and middle school and high school. Um, nilist down po nila lahat ng mga tracking nila, lahat ng mga parents na naging um, involved doon. Then at the same time po, yun ang binigay, isinabmit nila para tingnan po ng um, directors namin then to think about compensatory kung kailangan man magkaroon ng compensatory or where can we start before the start of the school year i'm going to give it back thank you marisel i really like the idea that you guys are getting feedback from the stakeholders particularly the parents um i think ginagawa rin yan ng philippines ngayon during the enrollment process so they're getting um um, feedback. feedback from the parents kung what kind of modalities ang mm -hmm. pwede nilang gawin, can they do uh, online learning or do they need modular approach, things like that. So at this time, we really need to hear uh, feedback from the parents as well. Mm -hmm. All right, Carol and Celia, who wants to go next? I, I can do, I can, yeah, I can share mine. Uh, um, you wanna? Okay, go ahead, yeah. go ahead. Okay. Um, Yung, yung mga yung curriculum aspect na nabanggit ni Marisol are really great um, ways para tap natin yung mga vulnerable student. But let me share this uh, one thing na meron pa rin kaming student na walang internet, mm -hmm. walang device, meron mm -hmm. mang device, hindi, hindi na, hindi compatible sa app na ginagamit na curriculum with the district. So, it's just too difficult. Um, as a teacher, malaking bagay yung pagiging open-minded. Uh, Na-bombard din kami ng maraming platforms. Na-bombard kami ng maraming apps. What I what my attitude was that it can be done, we can do something about it, and start simple in a way, kung saan do you think best cater to the need of your student, then do it. If the mo modular approach, like packets, are the way to do it, then go by that. Kasi meron akong mga student, meron mang internet, meron mang device, they can't even remember how to log in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> not, not because they don't want to but because they're not capable of remembering it and sometimes ang mga app is uh, is is not special ed friendly or too complicating for them so if module is the approach it may not be the perfect approach but at this time we have to think about the best for our students and to the parents way of helping so that that's one thing um and, and also, right now, maraming, like sinabi ni Marisol, which I truly, truly agree, 
maraming naapektuhan ng social emotional aspect ng mga bata. I think this is the best time we as teachers will have to be more to, to show them that we care for them in 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 a way where in mas siguro mas dagdagan natin yung the way to connect with them mm-hmm. messenger google uh, i use um google voice because i don't want to share my personal number i don't want to share my my facebook account but some of them have their cell phone so we do the google voice i don't know if philippines could use that and that's the way to connect and then call the parents once in a while check on them see how it is maybe as a, a little hi hello how are you doing so j- just just be extra extra caring and thoughtful with them and let them know that you care dumating yung yung platform ng zoom doon sila masaya nakita kanila nakita mo sila and as a teacher we are great actors and actresses i think after, during this COVID, you have to be a great, a more and more actor and actresses para maging mas, mas ma-excite silang makita ka. So just just be connected with them. Find ways to, to connect with them. That's all. Thank you, Carol. Yeah, I think at this time, kailangan talaga, ang priority talaga natin is the well-being of the students and the teachers as well. There are so many platforms available there, but try to limit it to maybe three. Don't mm-hmm. overwhelm yourself um, as teachers. Teachers, you also have your family, your kids that you need to take care, right? So um, yeah, don't overwhelm yourself with those things, right? Ang priority natin is well-being ng students and parents. Uh, teachers as well, sorry. Uh, Cynthia, now wala ang internet mo. Yeah, uh, no, I even asked Bianca to help me fix it. Okay, anyway, right. uh, the mention na ni Carol, uh, the mention niyo ng tatlo, yeah, but uh, first things first, okay, uh, I need to focus and uh, prioritize relationship uh, and first attention to our self-care so that we can support our students, okay? And since the start of the mall learning, I've been building a stockpile of PPE. Meron din akong, uh, how do you call uh, protective? What, what is PPE? Uh, personal pro- equipment. So these are strategies uh, that I'm trying to learn, new strategies that I'm trying to learn so that I can embed them in my lesson planning. And uh, ma-achieve din ng mga estudyante ko yung potential so that they can achieve their without uh, compromising the academic rigor. So I kept on, you know, uh, how do you call this? I kept on uh, enrolling in a class on how after my when it comes to technology, because honestly, okay, during my when I graduated from college there's no computer yet so this is a my part you know overwhelming on my part I am learning at the same time with and just like what you have said a while ago so start with checking on so emotional well-being so what I did uh, Two weeks after the remote, as uh, since we start the remote learning, I use Google Forms. Uh, I conducted a student well-being survey. You know, simple questions. You happy? Said, what is your most com- uh, pressing issue right now? Is it housing, food? Those concerns. So that's the first thing that I did. Uh, of reading. So I conducted uh, a survey, a uh, student well-being survey. And as we move on, as I've said, we need to prioritize relationship. Mm-hmm. We need to build resilience and hope. We need to teach our students hope that there's still pag-asa. Mm-hmm. Okay? So that we can, you know, together we can, you know, combat this uh, pandemic. And when I designed my lesson, 
in the next succeeding week, I sort of uh, create or I create continuity. Parang minimik ko kung ano yung usual classroom ko, classroom routines. Ganon pa rin when they are doing uh, their uh, learnings uh, uh, virtually. So I stick with uh, the, uh, the so-called learning or routines. How do you start your lesson? How do you end your lesson? Same thing. Even the, the pedagogy, uh, pedagogy, use the same. Use the same pedagogy. It's just a technology in it. So bid resilience, teach hope, and also um, I think as once in a while, every Friday, I ask them a sort of question question. Natoto ka ba? How many hours mo ba doing the lesson? Uh, nahirapan ka ba? Na i-access ang lesson? Paano kita matulungan? Those are things that I usually ask my students by the end of the week. Okay, help reflection on their learnings and on the process itself. Siguro uh, ayon when it comes to that first question. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, ladies. Marami ding mga responses ang ating mga viewers. I'm just going to read um, some of them. Uh, this new one is from Jelena. Embrace this new normal and find ways which you think is effective for the teaching learning process. Sabi ni um, Elena, uh, you, also, you can also see it on your screen right now. Sabi niya, dito sa Division of Palawan, Philippines, we have bridging class programs for grade 7 and 11 students ongoing right now to fill some gaps of the lessons that students don't get last school year. Uh, from Roy, Roy said, uh, since face-to-face -face learning is not possible, so we're creating uh, worksheets and modules to be used by the pupils. Another one from uh, Philippine Makapundag, remote learning has been a practice in our school. It is an American school of Doha. Hi, Doha. <laughs> May mga audience yeah. ni from Doha. Which started last oh, March to oh, June. Right. <laughs> Digital tools were used like Google Classroom, Seesaw, and, and Zoom. I definitely agree with you, Philene, and, and I'm actually going to go over some of those later. Um, I've mentioned in the previous webinars about Google Classroom, Seesaw, Zoom. Here in Singapore, we also uh, transitioned to virtual learning from March to June, and um, it was a success. We had two days of practice first, uh, and then we implemented the uh, actual virtual learning from April to first week of June. Uh, we used, we've been using Google Classroom for the past three years now, and it's really, really powerful tool uh, in providing the, the needs of every student in your classroom, whether they're gifted or students with um, specific needs. It's a good way to differentiate your materials, differentiate the instruction, differentiate the activities and the homework. Here at Singapore, we also use the tiered assignments where we base it on the level of the students. You know what, in this COVID um, situation right now, I can say that teachers are really superheroes in our own ways. Superheroes talaga, di ba? We make the impossible possible. Talagang, uh, lalo na yung mga teachers uh, from the Philippines. Last week, I posted, uh, so Facebook, they, I saw it. There are some teachers who went to the mountain just to get the internet connection to watch a webinar. Ganon kahirap talaga sa Philippines. And these teachers are really hardworking. They're creative. They're working on creating modules right now. The good thing is, uh, I think, Deped moved the uh, opening to August 24. <laughs> to give them some time to prepare uh, and transition to this blended learning, right? Because everyone is new to blended learning. Teachers need to, to learn this. And um, the only thing I can say, teachers, is don't be hard on yourself. If you have a hard time, if your plan didn't work out, it's okay, mm -hmm. okay? It's okay kung hindi nag-work yung plan ninyo, okay? <coughs> So I think the goal also during this virtual learning is 
trying to make the remote learning or the virtual learning as close as possible to the actual classroom setting. Uh, you guys mentioned about connecting with the kids, building that relationship. Um, I think on our part, it's easier to build the relationship during the virtual learning because we have the class from August to, to March, right? The difficult part is gonna be this August because mm -hmm. you don't have that connection yet with the kids. So it's difficult to build that relationship digitally, right? Mm -hmm. So I think so I think that's the challenge. But another thing that's really important also is uh, the administration <coughs> has to work with every teachers, make sure that it's really clear what platforms you guys are using. Um, if you could come up with the learning with one learning management system or the LMS, that would be great. Uh, school wide here in Singapore, we are using the LM, the Google Classroom as a one stop shop for our students to to mm -hmm. have their um, lessons, their assessments, their homework. Everything is there. Parents can access it, and also there's some uh, monitoring progress tools embedded in it. So those are really amazing tools. Wow, those are a lot of information insight from you guys and from our from our audience as well. So uh, before we move on to our second question, it's already eleven forty-five. It's so fast. Uh, we have a lot of questions from our from our audience as well. Okay, um, something related to that question number two. So maybe briefly, uh, the question is. When you teach regular classes, I know Cynthia is teaching a regular class, uh, we, but in regular class, we also have gifted kids. We have ESL, we have 504 plan. Whether you're teaching inclusion classes or self-contained classes uh, like Carol, how do you ensure that all your students are learning? That's a difficult question, right? How do you ensure that all students are learning? So the same thing with our audience. Um, please respond to that question as well. Please share what you've been doing in your classes so other teachers can learn from you as well. So we can learn from you as well. So again, uh, let's think for about a minute and then we're gonna respond to this question. How do you ensure that all your students are learning? I hope that we, we can give them some concrete, specific examples when responding to this question. Hi, Grace Navarez, thank you for watching. John Rabe one, uh, LMS, LMS stands for Learning Management System. Thank you for asking that. Ladies, are you guys ready? Yeah. All right. Who's ready to, to answer that question? How do you ensure uh, that all students are learning? Go ahead. Who wants to go next? First, Cynthia. Can I go first? Go, go ahead, first. Cynthia. Okay. Of course, uh, to ensure that all our students are learning, we need to do frequent checks for attending. Okay, from time to time, okay, during the duration of the lesson, uh, the lesson we have for and now what are some strategies uh, for uh, uh, students are learning within that time period? Simple thumbs up, thumbs down, Feedback. give me five, depending on the level of their learnings. Give me five if you understand the material, okay, being five being the highest, okay? a simple one so give me five thumbs up thumb, uh, thumbs down we also of the three two one i just use it uh this week for my uh summer school classes so they work the material uh on their own and i told them to sum up what they bring they have to uh post in our discussion board their three two one what is it? I ask them three things you've learned. And I ask them to be more specific. Do not just write, I learn about DNA. What about it? Okay, what from the DNA or about DNA you've learned? Three things that 
two things that you want to explore further or two things that need verification, needs uh, reinforcement. And one thing, uh, I ask them, write down one, two, write down one question to check the understanding or to test your classmates for understanding. Okay, so that's a simple strategy, three to one. And that strategy is, so uh, I, I've been using that strategy in a regular classroom. So my kids know when I say know already what uh, do I mean by three to one. Uh, I'm also using a course. Okay, in a regular classroom, I'm using four corner uh, corners. Uh, hope uh, for those of you who don't know what is meant by four corners, you divide the your classroom into four corners, and each corner has a specific lesson or topic. And then uh, young students uh, choose which corner. Yung corner ba na marami siyang alam? Or yung corner uh, pa yung understanding niya? And then within uh, students within that corner, about the top. So usually ang speaker, yung maraming alam. And then nakikito yung mga kailangan pa ng information. So that's corners. Uh, use for my English learners. Uh, some of them know the material, but uh, shy. Nahihiya sila na magsalita. Okay. okay. So they are still engaged. So I usually use a simple strategy. I call it toss and commit. So I ask them, I give them uh, sticky notes. So they write down the question, we fold the paper, and then we form a big circle and we toss the paper. And then the volunteer student will pick uh, one paper from the floor, uh, basahin niya yun aloud, and from us can answer or can add more. Whether uh nila na sila or disagree dun sa nakasulat sa papel. So, nalelesen yung uh, sinasabi natin yun, yung mga academic filters or affective filters sa classroom. Okay. How about strategy? Marami. Meron pa find the fiction. So, ask them to write four sentences on a piece of paper. Make sure yung tatlong sentences uh, are correct and then yung isa is wrong. Uh, intentionally, minali nung bad statement. And then the rest of the class, I use it usually in a form of a game. Uh, and we'll be reading her uh, four statements. And then the classmates uh, figure out we are wrong those four statements. So those are some strategies that I use in my, uh, for my students' understanding. So hopefully, uh, uh, I'm good, Sir Gani. Thank you, Cynthia. Uh, Marisol, you want to go next? Sure. Um, ang share ko po sa inyo yung um, pinapractice, na practice ko po sa classmate sa sa class ko nung um, nasa classroom pa ako four years ago. Yung tinatawag nilang uh, framework of universal design of learning. So, bigyan ko lang kayo concrete example. Nung nagturo po ako ng capacity sa bata, um, elementary kids yun, um, third grade, fourth grade, and fifth grade combined. Um, the way I use that principle, universal design of learning, three mean, multiple means of representation, kung paano ko yung represent yung lesson ko sa kanila, varied ways. I use PowerPoint. I use um, my video, YouTube na pinakita ko. And then, kasi kinikater, number one kasi kailangan yung maintindihan to know your student. You really know your student pretty well. Kailangan alam nyo kung ano yung uh, learning style nila. Kung Kasi dun lang magiging effective kung paano nila ma-accept ma, uh, ma or makukuha yung lessons na tinuturo nyo. Sa, sa, sa klase ko kasi, marami akong students with ASD. So may mga sensory um, processing disorders sila. Some of them, hindi nila po yung stimulations ng lahat ng video, too much sa kanila yon. So, sometimes yung isa, audio lang, 
merong habang pinapaliwanag merong nakatape dun sa Chromebooks na binid sa iPad niya, child specific iPad niya na uh, binidyo ko kung paano yung explanations para walang masyadong um, disturbance kasi ma 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 madidistract yung bata eh. Um, then, yun yung ginawa ko dun sa lesson na yun, uh, multiple representation, means of representation. Tapos yung expression naman, yung pangalawa namang principle nun is yung multiple um, ex expression and actions. Ginrupo ko sila, cooperative learning strategy. Bawat isa may sarili-sarili silang um, role and responsibility. Depende kasi sa ability ng bata. Kasi bawat isang bata may kinakailangan may i-contribute within the group. Um, meron akong bata na nabanggit ko sa inyo, cerebral, uh, may uh, diagnosed with cerebral palsy, hindi siya makakapagsalita. So, ginawa ko dun sa kanyang Dynavox, yung assistive technology niya, nilagyan ko lang ng three choices kasi ang, ang ultimate goal nila nung klasikong yon for 45 minutes, makagawa sila ng um, lemonade. So, nagdala ko ng different cups, you know, um, different measurement, uh, my water, and at the same time, my sugar, merong strawberry, and then yung lemonade. Ang, ang trabaho ng bata ko, kasi kailangan involved siya eh. Um, it doesn't matter na hindi niya kaya mag-pour ng cup. Ang, ang magagawa niya sa grupo niya, siya yung nag in charge Pipili siya whether strawberry or yung uh, orange ang gagawin nung, um, ng group nila. Yun ang participation ng bata yung sudyante ko na um, may cerebral palsy kasi hindi siya makapagsalita, hindi niya may galaw yung katawan niya, nakikipag-communicate lang siya sa assistive device yung Dynavox na tinray namin para sa kanya. Katulong ko yung speech language pathologist tsaka yung OT namin. Um, yun yung multiple means ng expression nila. Tapos nung in ko, yung mga bata, hindi lang traditional na um, paper and pencil test. Yung iba, kung kaya nilang gusto nilang mag-drawing um, para mapakita ma nila sa akin yung principle, malaman ko na naintindihan nila yung concept ng capacity, yun ang um, magdo-drawing sila kung ano yung equivalent ng one cup, one gallon, one liter. So, I'm just giving you an example na um, one thing to address all the learners, whether you're teaching special ed or gen ed, gen ed kids, um, the principle of UDL, Universal Design of, uh, for Learning, it's, it's big because you're giving equal access opportunities for everyone in your classroom. I'm done, Sir Gani. Thank you, Marisol. Great ideas. Um, Carol? Yeah, really quick. Um, sa setting na inclusion, chaka, um, what's the other one? The self-contained. Mm -hmm. Once you know ang individualized educational plan ng bata, surely, surely, you will be able to um, tap them all. You will provide learning. If kung gen ed, general education teacher ka, as long as you know yung accommodation and modification ng certain bata, certain student, and you go from there, plan your lesson from there, and, and assess ano ang kulang. Let's say may bata na hindi nakaka-start ng work. Bakit hindi siya maka-start ng work? Probably masyadong mahirap yung task sa kanya. Or probably masyadong maraming binibigay mo sa kanya. If you're going to, to balance everything from there, I think matatap mo siya for him to complete a work or for them to start their work. Another thing, like what Marisol said, use different modalities Pwedeng YouTube video, pwedeng drawing, pwedeng audio text, any kind of resources na available. Uh, I know it's very difficult sometimes na mailagay mo, ma-incorporate mo lahat ng modalities. But if you think of your highest functioning level and the lowest, you know, mm -hmm. challenge, most challenging student, I think kapag natap mo yung highest and the most challenging, you'll be able to tap mm -hmm. all of the students. That's all. We definitely have a lot of insights uh, from our uh, guest speakers and from our audience uh, as well. I'll try to um, summarize it in uh, five simple ways. Very simple words lang. I think very important. The first one is teachers need to be prepared. Uh, this means that you need to know your content. I think I saw one comment about knowing your content is really crucial. 
and also knowing your kids, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's when you start designing your curriculum. So make sure you know your students, know your content as well. The better you know your material, the easier it is to be aware of your students' needs, right? And uh, if you're having to refer to your notes constantly, then it becomes difficult for you to address the needs of your of your kids, right? So make sure you are really prepared. Number two, be willing to adapt. Now that we're going through this COVID-19 pandemic, virtual learning is a popular uh, method of instruction, right? So as teachers, you need to be willing to, to use those um, different technologies. And um, again, I keep on mentioning that there will be times when you carefully plan the lesson and simply doesn't work. It's okay. Um, if you need to throw out that plan, by all means, do that, right? Come up with a different plan. Um, third one, engage your audience. Um, our guest speakers mentioned about differentiated instruction, a lot of um, engaging activities. You need to do that even if it's virtual learning. Um, like for Zoom, you can still do small group breakout sessions where students can work in groups of four. Um, if you have a paraprofessional, you can also assign that teacher in a smaller group to provide intervention with your kids as well. So definitely you need to use different um, activities to engage your students. And so uh, your kids have different needs. So whether they are English learners or 504 or gifted, make sure that you engage them. And if there are some kids that requires reteaching, I hope that you provide that intervention with the kids. Um, again, if you have a paraprofessional or learning support specialist, just like in our case, we have a learning support specialist per, per grade level. So we tap on those resources to make sure that we provide uh, reteaching if needed or if we need to provide enrichment for the gifted kids as well. And finally, I think this is really important. When I was doing my national board certification, this is really powerful. Mm -hmm. You need to reflect on your instruction. Um, if you stop reflecting on what you're doing in the classroom, I would say it's time to retire. <laughs> you, really need, you really need to reflect uh, on a daily basis. Um, in fact, uh, we have day one and day two classes. After the first class, I try to reflect on my teaching. What went well? What can I change for my second class, right? So usually first class is your like practice class in a way, right? Um, so don't forget that uh, piece, the reflection piece. So again, make sure you're prepared, know your kids, know your content, be willing to adapt, engage your audience, reteach if necessary, and uh, don't forget to to reflect. So All then, right. Yes, uh, Marisol. Can I just quickly add something? Because sure. I saw something there in the questions from Sherina de Ocampo. How do okay. you, you deal with mentally challenged students who's in a modular distance? I'd like to address that um, in sure. a way because um, part of my group, my extended resource uh, teachers who I collaborated during the COVID-19, we have students who are in the life skills and I mean, who are mentally challenged. Um, for the modular distance, the only thing that I could suggest as a suggestion, um, when you created the modular for the kid, make sure yung communication board na gagamitin ninyo, yun yung ginagamit na makakatulong para maintindihan niya yung modules na ipeprepare mo. Um, merong ginawa kami sa grupo namin, yung teacher, uh, communication board para matulungan yung mga bata talagang significantly mentally challenged at pinaliwanag namin yung communication board na yon and benign their pin rin uh, sa magulang, yun ang naging way para maturuan yung bata kasi ma number one po talaga ngayong um, online uh, remote learning napakarami pong mga special ed kids lalo na yung highly impacted ang um, highly uh, maaapektuhan ma Lalo na kung hindi nila kaya itong online learning na to. Yan ang number one namin, tinatry namin i-address sa district namin. So nakita ko lang yon kasi yan ang collaboration namin all throughout. Gumagawa kami ng modular, tulong-tulong yung mga teachers na para dun sa uh, ma masuportahan namin yung mga bata. Lalo na yung mga parents. Kasi paano nila matuturuan yung bata, yung anak nila? Sorry, Sir Gani. 
No, that's great. That's a great uh, idea. Uh, I want to emphasize also the PLC work or mm -hmm. the professional learning community work. This is the time to really collaborate and work together. This is not a time to work in isolation. Um, if the grade level teachers could work together, mm -hmm. that will be easier on the part of the teachers. You don't have to create eight assessments. You can divide and conquer. Um, so work together now, work together. Gan, um, may, gan, may I say something? Sure, uh, Marisol, hindi ko nakita yung message yung nagtanong ng mentally challenged Marisol. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't get to see that. Siguro iba yung nakikita ko. Pero my, my heart is in special ed. Life But skills gan, ed, yeah, Marisol, if you see her name or anything, Gan, can you give her our contact number and we are, you know, contact uh, way of, you know, yes. so yeah. we, are, we are so... Uh, you know, great, you know, you know, having them ask, and we're very willing to share our. Yeah, yeah. share with you yung ginawa namin, kasi yung mga teachers okay lang. Yung sa team ko, isesend ko sa inyo PDF, baka makatulong. Yeah, yeah. Communication board. Yung name nung nung nagtanong. Yeah. So um, we yes, we can definitely go back and track the the comment section later. Um, but if you're watching, please email me at salesforacademy at gmail.com so I can facilitate the connection between you and our speakers, Marisol and uh, Carol as well. So they can provide the resources that you can use in the Philippines, especially now that we also have the ELS or the alternate learning system in the Philippines. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you, Carol and Marisol. That will be a huge help to, to our teachers and viewers. What? It's called alternate learning um, system. So uh, there's some they're, they're teaching um, out of school youth sometimes ages uh, 16 to even 60 years old. Um, oh. So so they're providing that alternate uh, education system for for them. Okay, those are a lot of information to take in. Uh, it's already afternoon. Good afternoon, uh, Philippines. Uh, Cynthia, Carol, and uh, Marisol, I hope that you can still stay with us. I know okay. it's late now in the U.S., but if you could uh, hang in there. We still have concurrent uh, 208 viewers right now. So I think they're uh, really eager to hear your experiences and expertise expertise. Um, in different areas. So please, please bear with us, uh, our guest speakers. All right, so here's our question number three. We're only question number three. All right, difficult students, yeah, naturally they exist in every classroom, right? Mm -hmm. So what do you do? What can you advise to other teachers? When students are disengaged, we always see that um, depending on the community that you serve, right? But it's a reality. In every classroom, there are some difficult kids. So what do we do? What can we advise other teachers um, to help these disengaged students? Um, our viewers, if you have ideas on how to address disengaged students, please, please type your responses in the comment um, section. Um, so in a minute, we're going to hear from our guest speakers as well. So again, the question is, what strategies can teachers use to deal with uh, disengaged students? Uh, thank you for watching. Good afternoon, uh, Julie. Hey. Julie Me Daraman, thank you for watching. Sherna, Julina, Marilu, Romel, um, Hemarani, Janeline Abad, Mauri Cabrera, thank you for watching. Vincent, Sherna, Arlene, Raniel, thank you for watching. All right, maybe one or two strategies. Uh, how do you deal with disengaged kids? What's gonna go this time? Okay, so yeah, go ahead. Are you giving us think time or are we answering? Uh, yeah. Okay, so. Shall I start? Yes, yes Cynthia. <laughs> okay. Now, if we are uh, uh, yeah, in a virtual uh, classroom, uh, in order to handle difficult students, uh, we need to teach our kids digital citizenship. Okay. 
uh, first day of our summer school, that was three days ago. First thing that we did, uh, me and my students watch a video, just a two minute video uh, about netiquette. Sort of uh, proper etiquette during Zoom meeting. Okay, so digital citizenship also. We have a difficulty with internet connection in Palm Beach, uh, no, Palm Springs right now. It's a mountainous <laughs> area. Go ahead, Cynthia. We're going to get back to you, Cynthia. Um, you want me to go? Marisol? Yes. Okay, you want me to go next? Yes, please. Okay, um, ang may share ko lang sa inyo yung, yung acronym na EAT, E-A-T-S. Um, I thought in an achieved classroom. Pag sinabing achieved classroom sa amin, um, yun yung mga behavior class. Uh, behaviorally challenged kid, disengaged, uh, may uh, non-self-regulated. Ang masasabi ko lang, number one na dapat niyong antindihin, yung functions of the behavior. Any behavior that you're seeing is a communication. It's always a communication. They're trying to communicate with you. You might be a little bit frustrated and irritated, but it is a communication per se. Um, the first one, when I say E, is escape. Ano ba yung e, gusto ng bata na takasan sa klase nyo? Kapag binigyan nyo ng lesson. So alamin nyo muna kung ano yung gusto niyang takasan. Yun yung escape, yung sinasabing escape. Pangalawa yung A, yun yung um, um, eat. A is yung is is they're trying to assimilate something may gusto silang makuha sa klase ninyo um kapag na pinpoint mo yon pwede mong gawing reinforcement sa klase niyo yon tapos yung T yun yung tangible either rewards or anything like a uh, free uh, um sa klase ko kasi yung nakikita ko gusto nila yung computer eh so alam ko gagawin kong leverage yung computer time so yun yung T yung S sa bata kasi may mga bata ngayon na may sensory processing disorder Minsan, yung ilaw sa classroom, yung Zoom, ma mas mahirap yan sa mga batang with sensory problem. Uh, kinakailangan may address nyo kasi yun ang pagsisimulan ng bata. Maaring engaging yung video o yung lesson mo online or kapag naman modular kasi I'm trying to put it in a way na yung mga batang hindi po pwede sa video. Yung pag naman modular, kapag nag-prepare kayo ng mga activity sa mga bata, Kung, kung the way you prepare it, may visuals ba? Or at the same time, meron bang step-by-step -step procedures na kaya nilang intindihin? At meron silang example and non-example, yung two things. Para hindi lang yung bata, remember, yung mga parents, lahat ng parents dito sa webinar na to, sila yung mag-guide mag, uh, mag, 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 mag dun sa mga anak nila para matapos yung, yung packet na pinrepare nyo. So it needs to be not only kid-friendly, but parent-friendly as well. When it comes to the communication, yun yung four functions of behavior na kailangan i-address para maging engaged yung bata at the very beginning. Go ahead. Yeah, I agree with you, Marisol. I think uh, really important. Usually, when students are disengaged, it's either because the content is either too challenging, it's mm -hmm. too easy, or but sometimes there's, there's also outside the school factors, right? Mm -hmm. um, Cynthia, is your internet connection now good? All right, uh, I think she's still having some issues with internet. Um, Carol, you wanna go next? Ah, uh, disengage. Dalawa lang. Ta tama yung sinabi ni Marisol, it's the behavior. And the other one is the physical state, body. Baka disengage ang bata, baka dahil hindi nakatulog, or baka gutom, or baka may nararamdaman. That's, that's something that sometimes uncontrollable on our part because that's the problem coming from home. But as a teacher... You have to do something about it by contacting the parent and asking for support. Now, yung isa, which is yung inemphasize talaga ni Marisol, very well said, is the behavior. It's either he wants to escape, ayaw niya ng work, baka masyadong mahirap, baka masyadong marami, baka, baka too stimulating para sa kanya, nahihiya siya, kaya ayaw niyang gawin, or may gusto siyang gawin, like attention, baka nagdi-disengage siya kasi he wants to be looking like, you know, the coolest in the classroom or maybe mm -hmm. he wants attention from you. Once you know the reason ng behavior, then you can get that student and make that student work. So, yeah, consistency is the key. That's all. Th 
Thank you, Carol. Cynthia, you want to add anything? I agree. We, we, you were uh, interrupted a while ago. Uh, I got lost connection, okay? So anyway, uh, if we are doing our lesson virtually, as I've said, so teaching our kids uh, the so-called digital citizenship, uh, and also during virtual meeting, we need to model good behavior. So uh, we know what I'm uh, invited to dress up properly, as if we are dressed up like how we look like in the classroom. Now, when it comes to normal classroom setup, a couple of strategies that I usually uh, use to engage my disengaged student. Let's say may estudyante ako na hindi gumagawa and okay? I simply ask for uh, questions which I found effective. Uh, umaten ako before ng uh, training uh, entitled Capturing Kids Heart and these are uh, very good questions that I usually ask my students to bring them back to the class, sort of. And these are the four questions. I usually ask in a very calm voice, okay? Excuse me, uh, excuse me, what are you doing? Of course, students will respond, nothing, okay? And then my next question is, what are you supposed to doing? And again, mag-reply yung bata, or oh, writing, answering the question questions and then next question is are you doing it of course I'm not about that. no I don't want to do it so your next question is you go about it step back give the child the student think time what are you about it and then later those four favorable questions you're gonna see the kid uh, uh, the work does not uh, escalate the situation, the misbehavior. So, tayo um, facilitators sa classroom. Uh, make sure miski gusto niyo nang sakali yung bat. Okay. Uh, uh, ano parin tayo? Parang normal. Pero sa loob talaga luna yung dugo. Okay, so so try to remain calm and core choose uh, let's try to treat all our students respectfully and politely as i, as, as I said let's try to delete the situation and also one thing uh we should labeling us as good or bad okay so if you want to address the misbehavior just say it is unacceptable or that is acceptable we don't say you're so bad Okay, so let's label our students. Let's use uh, your behavior is acceptable, unacceptable. Those are simple uh, strategies that I found effective. And I listen first to my students attentively. I ask him what happened, what's the issue. I just listen attentively. You know, after listening, uh, uh, attentively and then I'll explain I pull out the kid if the misbehavior is really super so those are simple strategies to you know to bring back the disengaged student and to build relationship as well so thank you that's it uh, this uh, so comment Johnny. thank you Carol Marisol and Cynthia this comment caught my attention from Jackie Lou Hora Nasa screen nyo rin po, nakalagay, do the lamb lambilos therapy. <laughs> Lambing, biro, and haplos. Teach with love. You should love your pupils and everything follows. <laughs> I think that works. I will be careful though. Sa last word, haplos. Yeah. Bawal yeah. ang haplos. Yeah. You're gonna you're gonna put into jail. Bawal ang haplos, okay? So, lambing, biro, but still, you have to be very careful uh, doing that, especially here in Singapore, U.S., that we have stricter rules. Yeah. 
there are um, some things that you can do. Uh, so be careful. Uh, also, from J. Lard the the good dog. Um, you have it on your screen right now. Before look at the side of the students, always look for the root of the problem to know the problems itself. Uh, yes. Cynthia also mentioned this. Don't try to oppose to the student. The more you oppose, the more they rebel, right? So another two strategies that we're using here in Singapore is the kid chat. So if you have some students that are disengaged, not functioning well in your classes, then we work with other uh, core teachers, science, ELA, our psychologist, uh, our dean of discipline. Uh, you need to involve them as well uh, in that kid chat to see the root problem. And we also have the care frontation. It's not confrontation, but scare from care frontation. Um, that way, that gives um, student agency. Uh, it comes from the students. What's the problem? What's the next step? Uh, things like that before uh, and then you can also uh, involve the parents as well so there are some things that we can do uh, prepare uh, we can do before the instruction there are some things that we can do during the instruction as well but ultimately we also need to uh, use the available resources that we have um, so involve other teachers your counselors uh, dean of discipline and parents as well to address the disengaged kids. Because let's face it, there are some students, uh, depending on where you're teaching, right? Uh, there are really difficult kids that you cannot handle in your classroom. So you need some outside uh, personnel to help you with that. Um, also, Pero, uh, yes, Carol. No, I, I saw a comment here, Sabe, Papaano Dao. In during virtual, right? Virtual uh, learning. And there is a disengaged kids. We've mentioned about, you know, uh, asking for parents' support. May nagtanong, I lost it, sabi, uh, papaano daw kung ang problema is magulang? Mm -hmm. If parents, oh, we, yeah, we have issues about that. We have, we have a lot of, you know, concerns about that. Um, I just want to share sa school namin, uh, meron kaming um, meron kaming level uh, we contacted hindi nag uh, hindi nagrespond ng parent so magahanap kami we, we will forward it sa support team hindi pa rin na support team maybe assistant or a counselor hindi pa rin so we will ask our administrator to contact the parent and then from there, kapag hindi pa rin, then it's moving on to the district level. So there are some things, my boundaries na, my limit na, ang kaya ng teacher, please yes. do not put all your effort into something na hindi nakakakuha ng response because you have to think about your other students as well. It's not okay to say... It's okay na hindi nag-work. No, as long as you know within you and yourself na ginawa mo ang lahat, all means and all ways, nagawa mo lahat and hindi pa rin sila nag-respond, then move on to the next task. Ask your administrator to to talk to the parent and then move on with, you know, your next agenda. Yeah. So yeah, that, that's what yeah. we do. Move on to the district level for the summit. Yeah, to sum it up, uh, I agree with Julina. Sabi niya, sabi niya, it takes a village to raise a child, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it involves all stakeholders, the students, teachers, parents, uh, administrators. You really need to involve all stakeholders, especially in these difficult uh, trying times. All right, uh, let's move on to our question number four relating to uh, motivation. So the question is, yeah, motivation is a major challenge in education. Uh, mm -hmm. I work in a high poverty school, traditionally underperforming in California. Motivation is really a huge uh, factor contributing to the uh, success of the kids, right? So what can we do as teachers to, to help the students uh, motivated? Um, audience, again, if you have ideas, please, please type your uh, responses to the comment um, section. 
think time one minute and then we're gonna share our ideas how to to motivate our kids thank you for your uh suggestions um comments from our audience i we really appreciate those ideas we're also learning from you guys thank you thank you for sharing although we know there are some um, strategies that work at this particular um community that you serve uh so you need to find the best strategy that works with your uh students all right so the question is what are some strategies that you can use to uh, motivate our kids all right <laughs> who wants to jump in I, I can do it i can start yes carol okay motivation big factor um hindi na motivate ang mga student i'm thinking of the general education classroom na mix they're not some of them are not motivated because they don't see the importance of learning the unit okay let's say algebra ed i'm not good in math why do we have to learn algebra and thinking nila bakit ko pahirapan ang sarili ko learning algebra then that's when the teacher with that content area has to expound knowledge and give right away life skills along with that algebra topic. Yeah. So kapag consistent ang teacher once in a while or maybe as, as possible is every day, ano ang significance ng unit mo sa life skills, then I think that's when students are going to be motivated. Secondly, consistent reward system, which is very, very useful sa special education setting. Mm -hmm. Consistent reward system. Tayo, we all work. And sometimes, in, in reality, all people will work for reward, which is our paycheck, our salary. So same with students. You know, reward system in many different ways. Token, maybe a phone call home, or maybe a little certificate, a pat in the back, good job. Those kind of things are really, you know, important para ma-motivate sila because especially now, they want attention from you. They want attention aside from their parents is or the teacher. So those kind of things. And then again, I've already mentioned parent connection, good communication with the parent, letting them know what's going on. And then in that way, alam ng bata na you have good rapport with the parent, alam ng bata na the parent and you are, you know, together for, you know, for his future or for his success, dun siya motivate. And a big part is coming from the teacher. That's all. Thank you, Carol. Uh, Cynthia? You want me to go next? Uh, yes, please, Marisol. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm just going to jump in. I will echo everything that um, Carol said. Um, it all boils down to knowing your students, their strengths, their interests. Yun ang lagi kong tinitingnan eh. What, what their interests. Kung hindi ko alam, I will communicate with the family, sa parents. Yan ang number one partner ko. I posting my Number one partner ko, yung uh, parents. Kasi dun ko malalaman ang interest ng mga bata. Then afterwards, um, I'll make... I'll make the lessons when I'm planning it interactive using technology if it's possible. Um, and at the same time, I always incorporated games and something that will trigger what they like. Um, strategy that ginagamit ko when I was in a classroom, yung Kahoot, tsaka yung Kahoot um, games. Gumagawa ako yeah. ng ganun sa klase namin. Yeah. So, <laughs> gusto, gusto nila yon. Tapos yung to build... Um, I forgot to mention, number one, nung nasa Baltimore ako, talagang uh, ang, ang nag-pay attention ako yung building relationship among my students, next yung parents. Pero ang inuna ko, yung stakeholders within the uh, school, yung jan uh, janitor, maintenance people, kasi yun ang mga makakatulong sa akin eh, the, during that time. Kasi ako yung bago eh, ako yung foreign teacher na pumunta doon, ako lang yung kaisa-isang Pilipino sa school. Um, so, yun talaga ang masasabi ko. Once na nakuha ko yung um, trust ng bata, because they will not trust you unless you're true and consistent. Once na nakuha mo yung bata, may trust sa'yo, yung sasabihin mo, they will give you the ben they will really listen to you. Mamomotivate mo sila. Then, um, yung, interest sa, uh, yung interest nila, tinitingnan ko yung 
learning style nila, di ba lagi kong sinasabi yung emphasize ko, know your student, meaning your their interest, tsaka yung ano yung learning style nila. Kasi dun mo maikikater lahat ng lessons na ipeprepare mo, differentiated, aligned with their strengths and needs. So, kahoot, yun ang number one na talagang ginagawa ko, Socrative.com, kung, may, kung yung mga may, may opportunity kayo. At pagdating sa building relationship, yung class dojo. Yun yung tatlong ginagamit ko dati. Yan. Maraming mga tools na na-mention si Marisol. Try to explore them. Um, walang pasok hanggang August 24th to explore those uh, online platforms. Yeah, Free. so try those. Uh, Cynthia? Yeah, Hello, uh, Cynthia. just like what they said, uh, they have, uh, first thing is, uh, we have to reward Acknowledge or call. Uh, I used to call. Uh, these are strategies. Okay. Uh, call out name that are on task. So call out students' name during class time that are on task. highlight positive behavior. And I saw a while ago in the chat that is true. Positive brings on. The idea there is once you catch a student doing something good. Uh, 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 praise that student, give something tangent, pay a reward. I used to give a uh, that says uh, the smartest, that candy, that serves yeah. the reward and love it. So give them reward, something that is tangible. Uh, as I said, go call out names and tasks, positive behavior. And as Marisol, uh, what just Marisol? So said, raise competition in the classroom. I used to incorporate games a lot of times uh, uh, during class time. So that to, you know, so that those, even those students that are this, when we are games, they have no other choice. They have to get up because the classmates are, uh, the students are moving. So they need to get up. So those are, uh, Simple that I'm seeing in my classroom uh, to motivate uh, uh, aims, rewards, point system, uh, one night work. Those are samples of uh, simple strategies that work. Yan, marami na tayong mga strategies na pwede nating gamitin, implement sa ating classrooms. Uh, just to sum it up, you really have to create a positive learning zone. Whether you're creating engaging activities, differentiating your instruction. A lot of you mentioned about intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. Um, if it takes uh, physical rewards, extrinsic motivation, do that. But I hope that from extrinsic, you can transition to, to intrinsic motivation. But also, I just want to add that in order to get them to the next level, you really have to know your students. Uh, Marisol also mentioned about building the relationship. That's the number one and the best uh, tool that you can use to motivate the kids. Make sure you know them. Um, it's okay if you spend five minutes having conversations with them about their sports, uh, but not 55 minutes out of 60 minutes, okay? Just make sure you find that balance also, uh, knowing your kids and at the same time uh, doing your uh, instruction. So it's really about having a personalized approach, right? You mm -hmm. want to show that you can engage uh, all your students yeah. in the classroom setting. Uh, one thing that we use also at our school, uh, beginning of the beginning of the school year, we always begin with a growth mindset. You yeah. really have to uh, change the mindset of the kids. And mm -hmm. throughout the year, once we start that first week building that uh, growth mindset and uh, developing that grit, um, that will stay the whole school year and even beyond that. So in my bulletin board, this is the change your growth mindset uh, poster that I created. So students, if they hear their classmates saying, I give up, they know what to respond. And it comes naturally with my kids. Um, I can share this. It, it comes with a PowerPoint, and then you can just print it if you want to put this in your um, classroom. So 
it's change your words, change your 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 mindset uh, activity. All right, question number five. As you know, social media, right? Uh, I think this is a huge problem. When I taught in the U.S., the use of cell phones in the classroom, um, students are always on social media nowadays. Um, research says 95% of te te teens have access to phones and they are always online, whether YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, etc. right? So is this a problem in your classroom? And what can you do to take this social media as a platform on your advantage as a teacher? Again, the question is, is this trend um, a distraction in your classes? And then what can you do to transform social media to your advantage as a teacher? So in a minute, we're gonna answer this. Again, audience, please respond to the question. Share your ideas. Thank you for watching Imelda, Jackie, Jolina. Hi, Chani, Marian, Jackie, Imelda Castro. And we still have 185 concurrent viewers. It's already 12.36. Let's try to finish this at 1 p.m. <laughs> but thank you for um, staying with us, uh, resource speakers and audience as well. All right. So maybe a minute or two, you ladies. Yeah. So this is question number five. What you guys, how do you use social media? I, this is hard for me to answer because on my, my personal experience, I never had that opportunity. Um, but back there in Baltimore City, um, even though I taught in middle school, they all of them had um, cell phones, but we had a strict policy not to use it in the classroom just because um, we don't want somebody texting because they're gang related for security purposes. Mm. It happened a lot in our school. So, um, but I, when I moved to, even in, in um, Everett School District, all middle, all high school, our high school students, it's a one, one to one. They have their own tablet. We provided tablet for them. So we use the LMS, all the apps in that, that the students can access Padlet, those things, um, to be able to really use that. In YouTube, we have the what we called we video, where kids are creating video, answering the questions of the teachers. So, but for me, I've never in my classroom back then, um, never used that platform using their cell phones just because of security, and we were guided by our own school protocol, district protocol. So, but I know parents, they're using an FV um, group to communicate the PTA teachers associations. You yeah. can do that. So that's all I could say for this. Yeah, the same thing with us here. Our parents have their own WhatsApp group um, <laughs> communicating with other parents, right? And uh, just like with Marisol, we have stricter rules here um, in Singapore. Um, from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m., the students are not allowed to have their phones with them. Uh, phones should stay in their lockers. Mm -hmm. We are also using, we also have a one-to-one -one, uh, laptop ratio here because we are um, Apple uh, Distinguished School. So yeah, I think um, it's really important that there is a clear um, school culture when it comes to use of cell phones in the classroom or school-wide. Because if there's no clear rules, that's gonna be a huge problem in the classroom and school-wide and teachers will have a problem with that. We saw a lot of cases in the US where students videotape their um, teachers, yeah. they try to provoke them and then videotape them. Mm -hmm. It's ridiculous, right? So I think the district and the schools have to have a stricter rule, period. Mm -hmm. Carol and Cynthia, anything you'd like to add? It, since you want me to do it? Okay. Uh, go ahead, Carol. Go ahead. Okay. Yes. School ko ngayon, cell phone, use of cell phone is a big concern, is a problem. Ganyu said there should be a clear rule. 
yes, there is a clear rule, right? But the thing is, there's no follow up. There's no yeah. follow through. There is no consistency. Merong teacher na ayaw, pero yung second period teacher pwede. Merong third ayaw, fourth period hindi pwede. So, walang consistency and that's the the problem. So, you are right. Dapat school-wide lahat ng teacher on board implementing the rule with consistency. Yeah. Sa classroom ko, uh, because, oh yeah, because I have, you know, a smaller class and I'm very, very, I would say I'm kind of strict with love <laughs> and consistent. Mm -hmm. Cell phone use is never a problem kasi mm -hmm. no cell phones allowed sa classroom ko. If they need to go Google Images, like Google Images, we really need to see that kasi especially pag vocabulary words, most of my students would learn kapag visual. They don't need their cell phone. Merong tablet na available for them to use and then use that as their resources. But cell phones were never a problem. Yung kapitbahay kong teacher, ang strategy niya, I just wanted to share, meron siyang shoebox, oh, plastic box, uh, sa table, every student has to put their cell phones doon sa shoebox na nando doon sa center ng table. Classroom management is important. Trust is important. Uh, I don't know how the teacher have, you know, uh, built that, but I guess consistency clear expectation should start first day in order for that not to yeah. be a problem. So, plat uh, yung, yung gagamitin yung internet, yeah, I use YouTube, yeah, those are the things na ginagamit ko sa classroom pag virtual field trip, especially now, hindi kami makalabas, we cannot do community-based instruction. We go, we use YouTube to go, let's say, for example, sa factory, uh, let's go travel to Disneyland. So those things, I use YouTube video in order for my students to see what's inside of it. And then current events, we use um, internet and Google videos and news uh, for as a student's resources. So that's all. Cynthia? You work at the same uh, the same Sorry, school I got lost. Um, uh, my connection, I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, so I Cynthia don't know what's going on right now. Are we still talking about cell phone issue? Yes. yes. Uh, <laughs> Cynthia and Carol both work in the same school district. So, yes, we have the same uh, um, rules when it comes to use of phones in the classrooms. But, again, it varies from school to, to the other, right? Um, if you guys have anything else to add before we move on. I just want to um, add also that last February, as we prepare for the virtual learning, that's when I started doing YouTube videos as a supplemental tool for my uh, math classes. So I started creating math videos to supplement my instruction. And my students really appreciate that because they can always go back to the, the videos to relearn the material or relearn the steps when they're solving a problem. So in a way, I use YouTube as a platform to engage my um, students as well. And I also created the Salesforce Academy FB page and the Math Made Easy uh, group uh, to help uh, pro uh, future teachers taking the LED exam and um, CSE or also the college entrance exams. So yes, there's some ways you can use these platforms to, to improve uh, the instruction and reach out to even more audience, right? Okay, next question. So Gani, one- <laughs> Yes, Cynthia. Uh, Go ahead. Yeah, I have a comment in the chat. Despite the existing rules prohibiting bringing up cell phone in school, still students have it and use it inside the classroom during class hours. That is very true. However, uh, ang meron ako ngayon sa classroom ko, bumili ako ng yung parang mga pouches. So, yeah. upon entering my classroom, ang gatas ko sa classroom ko ngayon is you have to surrender your phone. Mm. 
may respective numbers yung mga pouches. They have to surrender their phone or yung iba, ayaw nilang isurrender yung cell phone during class time. I keep it sa pocket nila but once na huli ko sila na ginamit ang cell phone, they have no other but to give it to me and they'll get it back after school. Okay. So that's a clear policy. You surrender your phone, fine. But once you're caught, you got to surrender it. If not, in this in render, uh, it's the dean uh, who will be uh, attending to that issue already. Yeah. So, so the class uh, removed out of my classroom. Yeah. So, thank you. So sa classroom may batas. Pag sinabing bawal, bawal. Kailangan magcomply, mm -hmm. no? Mm -hmm. Sabi nga ni Kim. So, tandaan nyo yan. Sa classroom may batas at ang teachers ang batas. So, so I like that. Right? That's, that's true. Tapos kukunin ng magulang. Pag nakita ko. That was it. Before. Okay. So, that's regarding social media. The next one is, we've been mentioning and hearing the word, the buzzword, differentiation. Mm -hmm. Right. So, could you guys give some specific examples? How do you differentiate your instruction to make sure that we address the needs of our um, kids? So again, audience, please respond to the question in the comment section. How do you differentiate your uh, instruction to address the needs of your kids? Try to give maybe one or two examples to facilitate this discussion. I remember the last time I attended differentiation was in 2007 in Las Vegas, Nevada. It was really helpful. All right. Let's share some uh, ideas now regarding uh, differentiation. What do you guys do in your specific classrooms? Whether the activities or uh, the... Yes. Yes, yeah. Cynthia. Go ahead, Cynthia. So, uh, may I say some, uh, okay, uh, bago ko ako magbigay ng example, kasi gusto ko muna, uh, because differentiation is different from real. Okay? So, uh, usually, um, uh, parang, let's, uh, uh, let me make an analogy. We are having a, a dining party. Okay? So, traditional teaching, dyan ako na expose 80s, Traditional teaching is like, uh, it's a one size fits all. Uh, and it is focused on the average student. Like, uh, like sa cooking, let's say 40, one dish lang. Adobo lang, adobo lang. Gusto mo, ayaw mo, take it. Or that's traditional teaching. And then, ang differentiation or differentiated is short order cooking. Parang punta ka sa dining restaurant, alam mo na gusto ang kare-kare dahil may allergy ka sa peanuts. So, hindi ka, hindi ka order ng kare-kare. So, ganyan ang teacher. Parang focus on individual student. So, oh, bawal sa'yo ang peanuts. So, adobo ka, nilaga ka. So we are responding, so we are focusing on individual student ability, but the question is, are we addressing all our learners' uh, needs? Okay, so usually uh, differentiated instruction is done, or we are responding after the incident happened. Oh, nalaman ko na, meron palang accommodation dapat si Jose. So, I am a graphic organizer. That's accommodation, that's scaffolding, that's differentiated instruction. However, when we say UDL, we mentioned kanina yan ni Marisol, that's universal design. So, kung plaza dining party ka, that's a buffet. Kung dyan kare-kare, may adobo, yeah, may nilaga, different choices. Maraming, maraming 
uh, putahe. And then, you are not telling the kid, hey, ito lang sa'yo, doing the L. Let, give the student the option to choose. Alin bang gusto ko? Ngayon gusto ko nila, ga, tomorrow ba, adobo. So, give the students to choose the option. And uh, that UDL is focused on variability. So, give the students the option. Paano ba nila ipipresent? yung knowledge nila. So, uh, using Microsoft Word, is it through a poster? Okay. Uh, uh, you know, to address, I've been uh, reading multiple intelligence sets. So, give kids the option. They're the ones choosing. Hindi kita na teacher magsasabi na, hoy, ito sa'yo. No. Give our students the choice, the option, na sila. Sila ang mag-decide kung paano nila ipipresent. Makita sa atin kung ano yung natutuhan nila. That is the sort of what we mean by universal design for learning. It's a buffet. And you choose what you want. To show what you learn and how you will be learning. That's Thank you. It. Thank you, Cynthia. Okay. Anything you'd like to add, Marisol and uh, Carol? Um, yung sa klase ko, special ed kasi ako eh. So, yeah. two things, since si Menensha yung UDL at DI, um, yung UDL, you fix the curriculum. Pineprepare mo proactive yan. Yung differentiation instructions, you fix the student in a way. Pero pareho, equal opportunities, equal access to learning, you're trying to do it. So, bilang special ed teacher, nung sa klase ko, I can just give quickly the way I present the lesson. Dini differentiate ko yan because I know the learning style of my kids. You've been hearing me over and over about that one. So I use different mod modalities in order to present it. So to address, kasi depending upon the uh, the students, yun yung yad yeah, nila. Another way also is yung assessment ng bata. Yan ang tinitingnan ko eh. Kasi yung assessment, yan ko makikita yung data driven decisions in my planning a lesson. So yung assessment na ipo provide ko, iba iba yan. Three levels ang ginagawa ko just because I know my kids. Some of them, po pwede uh, um, tatlong choices. Yung isa, dalawang choices. Yung isa naman, another activity, because verbal siya, magaling siya magsulat. I use different assistive technology or even technology to use that. Yung may share ko sa bawat isa sa inyo, you could differentiate the setting, the presentation, and also um, at, this, at the same time, assessments of the students in your classroom. You pick and choose. The most important thing is you're adhering the need of the kid. I just want to add to that, uh, Marisol, regarding the different level of assessments. Here at Singapore also, we're using the three levels of um, challenge. So we have the green, blue, and black level assignments and assessments as well. So the objective for every student is to get to the green level. So green level are green problems that are foundational. It's like the meeting the standards. And then uh, we differentiate the assignments uh, in terms of where they're at. So yes, we also give uh, adaptive assessments. So based on the as adaptive assessment results, we can identify then what will be their next uh, level. So personalization or personalized learning is uh, a buzzword here that we often use we, we use in the uh, in here in Singapore as well. So blue and black level questions are are higher level questions. Here in Singapore, as you know, Singapore has been always in the top three when it comes to the PISA testing uh, all over the world, right? I think Philippines is in the bottom, bottom three this year or last year. Um, but here in Singapore, we have a lot of kids that requires enrichment. That's why the emphasis for us here is providing them the blue and black level questions. I teach eighth grade right now, and in eighth grade, part of our blue and black level uh, enrichment for them is providing them geometry questions, algebra two trig, and pre-calculus. After eighth grade, we have some students uh, taking AP calculus in grade nine. So uh, we differentiate the assessment and the instruction as well. So that way in grade nine, they can progress based on where they're at. 
Um, anything else you you guys like to add? Okay, I think we're good in that uh, that question. Uh, let's move on to the next one about the online platforms because now that we're transitioning to to virtual learning, our viewers, I've mentioned this in our previous webinars regarding the online platforms. But I want to hear also from a science perspective, um, special ed and um, compliance facilitator, what online platforms do you guys use in virtual learning or blended learning? I know in the Philippines, they're doing now the blended learning. They're doing some uh, modules. There's online learning. I know they're mentioning about using uh, TV and radios. I don't know how that works. Um, so please share with us what online platforms do you guys use in the science setting or the special ed setting? Danny, I can start. Yeah, yes, Marcel. So, um, in our district, um, small district siya, 20,000 yung populations ng mga bata, but at the same time, we're fortunate enough na memraming mga support yung community, kaya nga yung lahat ng high school namin, merong, meron kaming online high school, meron din kaming three high schools, three different high schools, kasi three different regions ang Everett School District. Um, we use three, um, Canvas, OneNote, and then Google Classroom. Yun yung sa virtual, nung nagkaroon ng closure. At the same time, yung mga bata namin, tama yung sinabi ni Cynthia, not everybody has the capabilities ng internet. Um, yung district namin, nag-provide ng hotspots para dun sa mga bata, bumili sila ng Chromebooks, para dun sa mga bata na walang Chromebooks during that time. Um, in a way, thankful, kasi nga, Na, nabibigyan ng support ay yung mga bata ng ganon. I'm just thinking, paano pag sa Pilipinas? Pero may mga estudyante kami, lalo na yung highly impacted, na hindi po pwede ang um, virtual. So, nag-connect kami sa printing company to print the work packets um, na pinapare ng mga teachers para isend sa family. Yung family, pwedeng mag-request na umattend dun sa Zoom in Google Classroom ng mga teachers kasi may mga website din sila. And then at the same time, um, nag-request din sila ng packet, yung modular na sinasabi na equivalent sa Philippines para masuportahan namin. What I can tell you is, dun sa group ko, all extended resource teachers, there are 19 of them from elementary all the way to high school that I'm facilitating. Kasi in between ako ng mga teachers, at the same time admin, um, tama yung sinasabi ni Celso eh, be... Uh, not all of them, they're not familiar with this. Lahat tayo bago eh. Bago to nangyari tong COVID na to. So, na-experience na namin kahit na nasa Amerika may yung, yung frustrations, yung umiiyak ang mga teachers. Nakikita mo yun eh. So, we always say give grace to everybody, but choose one. Or if you want one or two, na magiging komportable kayo. Don't choose so many platforms. Talaga mahirap yan. Yung mga teachers na ever since Canvas ang ginagawa nila, Canvas. Yung mga teachers na never na gumamit ng ganito, sila na yung talagang bago sa kanila, nag-aral sila ng Google Classroom. Um, yung iba naman na OneNote kasi meron dun sa uh, ano, sa platform namin, yes, ginamit nila yon. Ang may share ko lang sa inyo, if you want to research na hindi na kinakailangan ng, ng uh, email ng mga bata, kasi yung Google Classroom kailangan ng email ng mga bata, yung sinasabing Edmodo, eh, um, yun yun, isa yung free. Edmodo tsaka Edpuzzle. Kung may access kayo doon, hindi na gagawa ng email ng mga bata. May, ano na lang, username and password. Makakatulong yun para makatulong sa inyo. Kasi ang Google Classroom, kailangan ng email eh. Kung hindi ako nagkakamali. Yeah. Okay, I wanna, I wanna jump in then because you mentioned about uh, Google Classroom. Uh, we've been using Google Classroom for the past three years here in Singapore. And I really love it. Um, the students, it's, it's a one-stop um, it's a single point entry for the kids. All our lessons are in the Google Classroom. Assessments, we can link there. Um, so those are powerful tools. But yes, there are so many tools available, but I always limit myself to three. Just focus on top three things that you want to use. Don't overwhelm yourself with different uh, tools. Yeah. So I use Google Classroom and Zoom. I use Google Classroom to, to post my um, Google Slides and announcements, and then I do the virtual, actual virtual learning through Zoom. 
And any informal chats with the kids or announcements, especially with my advisory kids, to make sure that you're checking how they're doing, things like that, I use the Google Hangouts. So Google Classroom is a platform I use to post my uh, lessons or the Google Slides that you can include videos, things like that, or links. And then Zoom is the virtual learning platform. And again, Google Hangouts is the uh, like an informal conversation with the kids. And then when it comes to the online assessment tools, I mentioned this also in last Wednesday's webinar. I've been using Khan Academy. It's free and IXL with limited access if you don't subscribe. But you can differentiate the uh, materials. It's not just for math, but all subjects and different levels as well. So I really, if you didn't watch my Wednesday webinar, um, try to watch that video, recorded video and try to learn how to set up Khan Academy account. You can create your classes for free. Mm -hmm. And even if, if you are a parent or a student watching right now, these are powerful tool as well. So same thing with IXL, it offers uh, two different topics. Uh, CUDA software, because sometimes we need to customize our assessments. Uh, CUDA software though, is, requires subscription. So we're fortunate that our school provided a subscription for all the teachers and students. So we use that. And of course, in addition, just like I mentioned, in February, I started Celso Academy YouTube videos. So I use those resources as well um, to provide uh, intervention and enrichment for my for my kids. All right. Anything else you'd like? To anything else you, you'd like to add, Carol and Cynthia, that we have not mentioned? Yeah, you've said all the resources we have in here. We were the district introduced us to so many things, and then. Like what I said in the very beginning, I focus on one, which is Zoom, and then connect that to Google Classroom. And then I have to learn Schoology, which is another learning system. Mm. I have to learn that kahit na alam ko, my students yeah. is difficult for them na yeah. matutunan yun. But you just have to yeah. be open-minded because this is where you're going. And that's yeah. the rest them. Yeah. You definitely need find you definitely need to find time to learn this uh, platform. Again, we're just very fortunate, and the transition is easier for us because we've been using this for the past uh, three years. The only thing that's new to us is the Zoom uh, platform. All right, it's already 101, 102. Uh, let's have our final question. <laughs> okay. Uh, so here's our last question along. Uh, final tips, final tips and strategies that you guys can share to our viewers uh, when it comes to blended learning or virtual uh, learning. Also, uh, viewers from the Philippines, please share your ideas as well. Any tips and strategies for other teachers? Um, I know among the registers at is 2200 and uh, about 95% are teachers and we have some parents and students as well. So any tips or strategies that you, you guys could share to all of us will be appreciated. All right, maybe one or two um, tips, strategies that we guys can... Is that, uh, what's... Yes. I think yes, I, can, I can start. I, Go ahead, I can Carol. Start. Just, just keep this in mind. Little something is better than nothing. Kasi marami tayong dadaan ng challenges and frustration. As Again, as long as you know in your heart that you've done your best and you've done your part to, to connect with the kids, to connect with your students, then you're good. Uh, kaunti lang ang makuha mong uh, result from them, it's better than nothing. Kasi meron tayong students na wala. But we don't stop from there, search another way, another route. For us, those na, na vulnerable or not participating, may makuha ka. Secondly, for those na walang internet, for those students na walang internet, walang gadget, ask them to read. Ask them to, ask them to teach some other siblings or family on something that they just read. Uh, challenge them to do something like learn how to play an instrument 
or learn how to cook or take a video or you know project between the child and their parent maybe take a video of how to to garden or how to cook or how to do the laundry make think of something to keep them busy think of something that they will use for their life in a longer time that's all and take care of yourself and reflect philippines yes thank you carol uh cynthia a huh, little something is better than nothing yeah from jubel i like that cynthia uh yeah. final tip and strategies for our uh viewers okay uh okay let me go ahead first uh, uh i have uh here a few simple tips uh in the uh designing lesson Okay, you in our uh, using the virtual classroom. Make sure your lesson, whatever it, uh, it is, make sure it is essential for some and usable for all. A lesson that is essential for some student, but usable for all. Keep the rigor by uh, providing option. And again, gaya ng sabi ko kanina, make sure nandun pa rin yung uh, sense of normal, uh, normalcy routine. Kung anong ginagawa in a regular part pa rin yan ng virtual uh, classroom. Okay? Uh, and I, uh, this is now the time to practice two things as teacher. Let's start practicing empathy and flexibility. So practice empathy and flexibility, especially in grading decisions. Okay, we don't know what's going on with our students. So kung hindi sila nakasubit ng assignment, give them the time, the luxury of time. May family, uh, family member pala na may COVID. So let's practice empathy and flexibility when it comes to uh, grading decision. And let's try to keep connected. Uh, and let's try to be that hope, you know, so that our students will be, you know, let them stay positive. Let us be, as teachers, dapat tayo ngayon ang advocate uh, para sa mga estudyante natin. Uh, and one last thing, the second one is, this is now the time to practice strong collaboration among stakeholders. Uh, sabi nga dito, I quote ko lang to uh, proverb na to. Sabi niya, uh, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. So that is strong collaboration. Okay? We need each other in this uh, tough time. So that's it. Thank you. Uh, Marisol? I will add to everything that they said. Um, for the perspective, in the perspective being a compliance facilitator, uh, number one, I would say the collaboration. It's really, really very important among stakeholders. That will break and unbreak everything. Give yourself grace, everybody. Um, lahat tayo bago. It doesn't matter kung walang technology or something. But the most important thing is alam natin we are patient with one another, both parents. Lahat ng parents na nasa webinar na to, um, um, that patience, and then yung, yung, yung trust na lahat ng mga teachers, gagawin nila lahat ng magagawa nila. Um, sa lahat naman ng leadership, admin, this is the time really, uh, yung, aside from trusting the teachers, give them the support that you can get. Kasi yung mga teachers talaga, both special ed, gen ed, lahat yan. Talagang napaka-creative niyan. Gagawin nila ang the best para sa mga bata. What they need, time, support, at saka yung tinatawag na emotional support. Yun ang big eh. Um, anybody will do above and beyond. Pero pag alam nila na nagtitiwala sa kanila yung admin nila at uh, pakikinggan sila ng without judgment, kahit umiiyak sila, na overwhelm sila and everything. Kasi nangyari yan sa district namin eh. Um, Pag naramdaman ng teachers na nandiyan ang suporta ng admin, magugulat kayo. Yan ang tinasabi nila sa high leverage practices na teacher efficacy. 
lalabas yan lahat ng mga creativity ng mga teachers. Um, collaboration, trust at the same time, support. Number one yan, support. And yeah. I forgot, communication. Please, parent, communicate with the teachers. Teachers, communicate with the parent. And students, always ask questions. This is the time for you to ask questions. You are the Generation C, Generation COVID. <laughs> I like that. Generation C, COVID. Generation C. Wow. You flourish. You're flourish. Yeah. Ibang klase ang generation nyo. Yeah. That's one thing that I like here in Singapore also. Our leadership team are really compassionate and have that empathy. Sinabi ng aming uh, administrator when we started with virtual learning, sabi niya, don't start with a 10. It's okay if we start with a 5. And then from five, you go up six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Don't start with a nine or eight, and then you suddenly decline to two, right? So again, the emphasis during this time is the well-being of the students and the teachers. So as stakeholders, we really need to work together, okay? So with that, I hope that we were able to uh, meet the agenda for today. Um, I think the only one that wasn't addressed, the third one, we didn't have any questions regarding life of teachers as an OFW. Um, yes, teachers are also overseas Filipino workers, right? So we face the same challenges as other OFWs around the world. Mm -hmm. um, again, thank you so much sa lahat ng mga viewers natin. Uh, from the Philippines, we also have from Doha, Indonesia, kung saan man kayo, and uh, to our to our friends, uh, Marisol, Carol, and uh, Cynthia, I can't thank you well enough. Um, sharing your expertise and knowledge to the Filipino teachers um, and uh, viewers. So, maraming maraming salamat sa inyo, and I hope that you continue. Um, sharing your expertise to to our to our teachers. Uh, okay. With that, uh, yes, Marisol. Um, yung mga sinabi namin kanina ni Carol uh, na resources namin, email na lang namin sa inyo yung mga strategies at high leverage practices na meron na pwede nyo magamit for your professional learning community. Um, say, say yun na lang namin gani send then. You yeah, can that will be great. Disseminate yeah. it to everybody, even the UDL, all those charts. We can send it yeah. to you. Please share it with me. I also created a Google Classroom for teaching and learning webinars. So I will uh, share those class codes. So if you guys are willing to, to join the Google Classroom for the teaching and learning webinars, then it will be easier to, to post those resources that will be shared to us by Marisol and Carol and Cynthia. So uh yeah. please so even join the Google, the Google classroom. classroom for our b ed my group my b -ed. oh that's awesome yeah that's you good. mentioned that yeah um also next week we have other upcoming uh webinars for wednesday uh let me see uh wednesday we have orchestrating engagement and uh discussions so i will be facilitating that webinar Wednesday at 6 to 7 p.m. And uh, July 4th, we will also be joined by um, California teachers and a teacher from Nevada, USA, uh, to share with us about the PLC work or professional learning community um, that impacts students' success. I hope um, Carol, Marisol, and Cynthia, you can join us soon. Uh, again, I'd like to apologize that we extended, but it's hard to say bye, right, to the to our audience. And uh, again, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, regards to your families in the U.S. and in the Philippines. I hope to see you soon, uh, viewers. Again, one last reminder: don't forget to like, follow Celso Academy FB page, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, Selzer Academy, and don't forget to hit the bell button as well. See you in our upcoming webinars. And again, your certificates will be available tonight at 8 p.m. Have a great day, everyone. Carol, Marisol, and Cynthia, please stay with me. Oh, okay.
Oh, really?